In this video, we're going to look at a few simple VDU display commands. We'll also look at a couple of different ways of sending those to the processor. If we recap the diagram we have of the architecture, we want to send some information from our processor through the VDP and onto the display. We'll look at two different ways, sending single bytes at a time and a byte stream. Again, the tools we'll be using are Nano for the text editor and Easy ATSM for the assembler. If we look at the wiki page, the VDP is explained in terms of all the different commands that you can send to it. If you've already used BBC Basic, then some of those you might be familiar with already. We'll be looking at a few of these ones today. One of them will be the mode. VDU 22 and the mode. This is setting the screen mode, i.e. what resolution it will run at and how many colours. These are all listed further down. We'll be using mode 8. This uses 320 by 240 pixels with 64 colours. And this is the whole program we're going to be writing today. It's not a lot different to the first one. You can see at the start, we do all the same things that we did begin before. But here we're going to start sending commands. When we look at the screen mode, that's command 22. And that's here. And that's going to be followed by 8, which is the actual mode we want to set. So this method sends one byte at a time to the VDP. We have to put the byte that we want for the first command into the register A, and then use this command, RSTLIL number 10, and that's in hexadecimal, to actually send that command. We then separately send the actual parameter of 8 afterwards. The second method is to send a whole chunk at one time. If you look back to what we did before, we had a string, we had a length, a delimiter, and then here we had the string with the delimiter at the end. Now what happens actually if you want to send that delimiter character? Well in this case, what we're going to do is that we're going to define the start of the data to send and the actual length. And we've worked out the length by calculating a label at the end minus the label at the start and that will give us the total number of bytes that are included within this section here. We then define each byte line by line for all the different commands that we want to send. So for example 17 is going to set the text colour. Now here we want to set the colour to black so if we'd had a delimiter of zero that wouldn't have worked, it would have bailed out at that point. 17 you can also set the background colour, but you add 128 to the colour that you want. Of course you can just add them together, I've put it here separately so you can see what's going on. We can also tab to a different place on the screen. So 31 is the command to tab to a different point, and then that's followed by two numbers representing the X and the Y coordinate. We've then said, please send this text next once we've tabbed to that position. And finally, just to keep things tidy, we've reset the actual colours back to the normal ones. That is, 15 is bright white, 0 plus 128 is 128 for the background colour. So that's a black background colour. As before in the nano editor, you can see we've got exactly the same code as we had on the PC, but it's in black and white. And you can do all your editing in nano. And again, to compile this, or should I say assemble it, we type in easy AT ASM, the file we want to assemble. 
and that assembles very quickly. If we then load the binary file it's just created and run it, you can see it's done what we wanted. We've got some black text on a yellow background and it's printed at 10, 10 coordinate position. Again, fairly simple, but gives you some building blocks to work from.